We got some sound on this bad boy. Chicken. Shades on. Good afternoon. Good afternoon and bok bok. <clears throat> bok bok. Innovate or die. As engineers, creatives and technologists on the cutting edge of Web3, it is our mission to outpace the natural rate of change. The blockchain toothpaste isn't going back in the tube. And we, the decentralized army, must continue to lead the charge lest the lead be taken by the powers that be. The very powers Web3 was invented to disrupt. And it is innovation that distinguishes these leaders from the followers. This is to say, it isn't time to become complacent with NFTs. It's time for us to realize their true potential and to lead the charge on Avalanche. Bok Bok, my poultry pals. My name's Booksy. Some of you know me as Cluck Norris. I'm the co-founder and digital platforms and currencies architect of a not-so-little project called Chicken. On the 12th of November, 2021, under the guise of 10,000 mimetically desirable NFTs, Chicken was born. This project has been and will always be the Trojan horse of Avalanche, a simple, fun, and approachable game fire wrapping for a revolutionary concept in digital asset innovation, upgradable NFTs. With no clout, no paid shills, and no previous connections to any established platforms, we did something far too infrequently seen in crypto and launched an entirely original project. With no VC funding, no code to fork, and no template to copy, six indie developers from Australia used nothing but sound tokenomics, hard and fast mathematics, and revolutionary digital architecture to create the framework for the world's first infinitely expanding metaverse of upgradable NFTs, showing the world the extent of what is possible on Avalanche. And how does one package such a concept in a way that anyone can understand and everyone can enjoy? Simple. The chicken and the egg. So, what are upgradable NFTs and why will they make standard NFTs obsolete? On a high level, they're any ERC721 contract or equivalent NFT standard with metadata or imagery that can be altered due to specific on-chain actions. While the upgradability of NFTs has extensive applicability, think loyalty programs, uh, digital identity credentials, supply chain management, we have chosen to unleash their potential to the world with a concept that's significantly more enjoyable and universal. Everyone knows the chicken lay egg. Further, your commitment to interacting with these NFTs can directly and continuously influence your outcomes rather than the traditional investment thesis of buying NFTs purely for speculation. Upgradable NFTs have the ability to drive product interactivity and user behavior on a granular level. This is extremely important to major brands, platforms and corporations and it's about to become imperative to the tens of billions of dollars worth of existing static NFTs too. We're streamlining the process of upgradability, making it accessible to everyone, not just experienced developers. Soon, there will scarcely be a reason to create an NFT that isn't upgradable. Now, while we're working tirelessly on our active play and earn game offering, play and earn, not play to earn, we believe the gameplay is just as important as the earning mechanism, idle gaming at Chicken Farm is the cornerstone of our platform. We feel Web3 is optimized particularly for idle gameplay with an emphasis on ownership, value creation, and now upgradability. For anyone who's unfamiliar with Chicken Farm, here's how it works. So, let's start by buying a chicken together while we're listening to a bit of chicken radio. We head over to the marketplace, chicken.farm slash market. We choose our chicken just under the floor price of 25 AVAX, and we purchase the chicken. 
Before too long, our transaction is submitted. And once it's cleared, we can head over to our roost to see the chicken sitting there, already roosted, with 14.541 egg already attached to the chicken. Perfect sniping opportunity. We can claim that egg straight off the chicken. Let's do that, confirm. These transactions are all costing less than, say, 30 cents. Once we have that egg, let's say you bought a chicken and you didn't have any egg to claim. You can head over to Trader Joe. Let's say let's buy one AVAX worth of egg to get us started. <clears throat> Quick, easy. Bangers, by the way. Um, let's head back to the roost. Obviously, we refresh. Uh, we don't have to refresh, we can wait for the blockchain to update, otherwise we can force the refresh. We've got 72 egg, let's stake 50 of that egg. This will start earning us some feed, so we can feed our chicken. We're going to keep some egg so that we can head over to our farmland. Oh wait, let's go back to Trader Joe. Let's say we don't want to wait for our staking to generate some feed. For the purposes of this video, let's purchase some feed from Trader Joe as well. Obviously, you generate feed uh, according to the egg that is staked, but for purposes of time, let's buy some. Let's head back to our roost, and we have some feed. Let's force a refresh on the user interface. Great, we've got our, feeds, uh, our egg staked and our feed in our wallet, and we can feed our chicken. This chicken was already at 9 kg, uh, we're going to upgrade this to 10 kg. This is a chicken we actually bought last night for the purposes of this video, by the way. Um, great, force another refresh. There you go. Chicken is ready to be leveled up. Fully fed. We're confirming these transactions. We can't wait for the new core wallet from Avalanche. We think it's going to improve the user experience so much more. MetaMask is obviously optimized for Ethereum, not Avalanche. Does the job for, for this point in time, but the core wallet's going to be a major, major improvement for our platform and for Avalanche as a whole. Now let's head over to our farmland. We have one farmland here, starting off at one bigness. In its infancy, we can burn some of the egg that our chicken is laying to upgrade our farmland. Let's confirm that. And let's activate our farmland while we're here so that we can have an individualized LP farm right on the platform. You can have these multiple transactions uh, submitted at once while you wait for them to process. Let's force another refresh. Great, so we've upgraded our farmland. We now have two tiles. We've got an activated farmland. We're ready to farm uh, LP style as opposed to single-sided staking. And we've added a tile to our NFT. It's like a fresh mint every time you upgrade. This is our wallet. We can see we've got our chicken and our farmland. Fully upgraded, ready to go. So as you can see, we were able to buy a chicken, buy some egg, some feed, we staked, we farmed, we fed, we upgraded our chicken, and we expanded our land and activated it, nine transactions, all within a few minutes. On Ethereum, this simply wouldn't be possible. And you'd be thousands of dollars out of pocket from gas alone. It is funny. So, in four months and 10 days since the release of the chicken NFT, what have we achieved over a chicken farm? Well, we've minted two entirely novel series of NFTs, 10,000 chicken and 5,000 farmland. Chicken is the number one 10,000 NFT collection on Avalanche by way of market cap and floor price. It took us almost an entire week to mint out the chicken NFTs. Ever since, 10,000 NFT series can mint out in minutes. Everyone wants to find the next chicken NFT. Our mint price was one AVAX. Our floor price is now 25 AVAX. We have over 2,300 holders of chicken and we have over 2,900 uh, holders of farmland. We have over $4 million in liquidity for egg, and we have over $18 million in total value locked. Users have performed close to 1 million total transactions. 
Our community is approaching 12,000 Twitter followers, 7,000 Discord members, the best Discord channel in all of crypto, if you ask me. And this is all organic. We never paid for any of these followers. We never paid for any shilling, never paid for any influencers. This is all word of mouth. This is all the, the grassroots work of our team and our brilliant community. Over one million egg has already been burned between feeding frenzies, the chicken naming service, roost naming service, skipping cooldown timers and expanding farmland. There are quite literally endless egg burn methods still on the way, causing enormous deflationary pressure on egg, our governance and utility token. The upgradable NFT revolution has well and truly begun. So how have we done it? Firstly, with the support of the best community in crypto, the chicken fam, where the whales are so kind that they run their own giveaways. <laughs> exactly. And when newcomers jump straight into building custom tools direct from the API before they even own a chicken. Here's an analytics dashboard uh, built by community member V Forever using our own API endpoints with zero guidance from the team. There are dozens more of these third party tools and they just keep improving. If you're new to chicken, please do yourselves a favor and join our Discord server, discord.gg slash chicken. Our barn doors are always open and we implore you to get involved with the project and the community. You'll be welcomed with open arms. The Coop is home to the friendliest, funniest, most supportive and generous community in the entire space. I've honestly never witnessed anything like it and we're thankful each and every day for the vibrant and passionate collective of individuals who bolster this project every step of the way. Those of you who made the journey to be with us here at the summit, thank you from the bottom of our hearts. We're committed to establishing a culture of kindness and inclusivity. When we started this project, that was at, at the absolute forefront and the community continued to carry it forward without fault. The culture and the people surrounding a project are as imperative to its success as the technology itself. And we're 100% aligned with Avalanche in being committed to these values when building out our ecosystem. Come on. Secondly, one of the most integral elements to our ecosystem is how we designed its foundations. Our novel tri-token architecture is the first of its kind. The basis of it is one ERC721 and two ERC20 tokens working in perfect harmony. As you can see, the chicken lays the egg that egg can be staked either single-sided or as LP for feed. That feed generated can be used to feed the chicken. The feed is immediately burned. The chicken's metadata denoted in kg for kilograms or kilogains is upgraded. The chicken becomes bigger. The chicken lays more egg. The chicken also attains more value uh, in terms of its in-game capabilities, particularly when it comes to our active gameplay coming later this year. Sorry, someone's crying out there. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. One, missed out on chicken. <laughs> so uh, there's certainly a resonance in our symbology with that of Avalanche, the mighty triangle, but there's, uh, this is a lot more than a pretty diagram or a, a happy coincidence. This is the most robust tokenomic system any NFT project has seen to date. And we say that with confidence, having seen a multitude of unofficial forks and replicas of our tri-token architecture already within six months from its initial reveal. And if it's not the architecture being replicated, it's the concept of upgradability or the novel staking mechanics, which allow for the NFTs to remain freely tradable and in possession of the owner while staked. In truth, we wouldn't have it any other way. We set out to unleash a movement with chicken and unleash it we have. We don't wish to stifle this innovation, quite the opposite, we aim to harness the enthusiasm to develop on top of our sound fundamentals and to channel it into something more streamlined, more articulated and more powerful. As you can see, <clears throat> the elegant simplicity of the tri-token architecture is also its utility. It allows for constant and permanent expansion. For example, here's how farmland builds on top of our pre-existing architecture. Again, the egg, the emissions token of chicken, becomes the fuel for all future releases on chicken farm. The user burns a small amount of egg to increase the size of their land, adding a new randomized tile to the image every few levels, as well as increasing its metadata to allow for a higher capacity of farming rewards. 
Soon, users, excitingly, will also have the ability to burn our third ERC20 ecosystem token, FERT, to upgrade their farm's rewards multiplier, gamifying LP farming to allow for increased rewards over time, rather than less, for the first time ever. And it doesn't stop here. As you can see in this first look diagram, our infrastructure and our architecture expands infinitely and can scale indefinitely, all powered by egg. This will be the structure of our core family of NFTs. Chicken, farmland, rooster, and a third generation of creatures yet to be announced. Stay tuned. As we continue to build out our own product line, however, we want to bolster and champion new emerging and existing NFT projects like only a blue chip project and community can. How? With the chicken launch pad, Ignite, taking NFTs to the next level. Ignite is our developer facing solution for rapid ecosystem expansion. As well as fostering and onboarding new projects, with the help of our friends at Multichain, we plan to bridge over $1 billion worth of NFTs from Ethereum to Avalanche to join the upgradable NFT revolution. It's an ambitious target, but one we're extremely optimistic about, and here's why. Using Egg as the fuel, we are offering any and all of the following to quality third-party projects looking to upgrade. Affectionately known as GWAM, gamified whitelisting and minting as a service. USC, upgradable smart contracts as a service. Custom marketplaces as a service. We're offering chicken farm integration, farmland integration, idle and active gameplay integration, liquidity incentives, and of course, LP farming to name a few. All of this while immediately bootstrapping these projects to the egg economy and exposing them to the most intelligent and active crypto community of NFT lovers. This is all to say, we're turning NFTs into super-powered Web3 Tamagotchis. Now, obviously this is a huge value proposition for NFTs, for Avalanche and especially for Egg, and still we aren't stopping here. Eventually, we're going to need more room to grow, a space of our own, tailored for our platform and our community's needs, right here on Avalanche. We call it the blockchain. Avalanche's premier subnet for upgradable NFTs and play and earn games. Some of you might have heard of a little grant that's been given out for new subnet innovation on Avalanche. We want to tell you in no uncertain terms that we have applied and we will continue to pursue this multiverse grant. It would enable us to develop the blockchain at a significant pace and turn a fully fledged chickenverse into a reality. The blockchain will mean that our expected hundreds of millions of transactions won't be competing for block space on the Avalanche C chain. We'll be able to ensure a faster, smoother user experience when interacting daily with your NFTs, be it idle or active gameplay. No more untimely gas wars during important mints. No more failed transactions during raids, battles, feeding frenzies for reasons unknown to the community whom it concerns. Our schedules, our rule sets, and nothing but the unbridled power of egg. That's right. Egg will be our custom gas token, and significant burning will occur with each and every transaction. After all, every good system relies on the same fundamentals, inflation and deflation, supply and demand. The blockchain ensures the permanent balance of these fundamentals for the unsung hero of our ecosystem, Egg. <laughs> Lastly, our next and most anticipated release, Rooster. Hmm. Round of applause for our incredible artist, Gravy. <laughs> Minting in exactly three weeks' time on the 14th of April, we're, we're proud to present to you Rooster, NFTs that fight and furt. Rooster will be the perfect partners for Avalanche's favourite NFT, Chicken. Rooster will also be the flagship example of how all future Ignite releases are able to work for both developers and minters. So, when is it? April 14th, the total supply, alpha drop, is 12,000 Rooster. This is a, height, a slightly higher supply than Chicken, 
This is to ensure that there is always more scarcity to our original NFT series, as well as expanding our user base, without devaluing the Rooster series, knowing that we comfortably have the potential users to absorb the increase in supply. Minting rounds, there will be two. All we can say for now is that the first round will be gamified and will be optimized for chicken and egg holders. The second round, the public mint, if you will, will run much more like a standard mint in an effort to eliminate any potential barriers to entry for new ecosystem participants. We feel this strategy will provide two major benefits, an advantage and reward for our early adopters and existing community, while still providing an equitable and affordable entry point for newcomers to the chicken ecosystem. So how do you prepare? Well, simple. One, stack egg, hodl AVAX. Two, make sure you're available for the entire minting window. The times are yet to be announced. Three, pay close attention on Twitter and Discord in the lead up to the 14th. And remember, chicken is a game and the rooster mint will reflect just that. Hmm. So, as you've all learned by now, chicken is deceptively simple on the surface, but we're truly changing the game. We've instigated the avalanche of upgradable NFTs. As time moves forward, our momentum continues to grow and our eco ecosystem continues to expand at first, gently, and soon exponentially. While we do intentionally withhold some alpha, allowing our users to speculate and decide how they wish to play the game, we want you all to have the information you need to participate, develop, collaborate, and excel. We encourage everyone to join us in ushering in the new era of NFTs with upgradability, interactivity, idle, and active gameplay. We can't wait to unleash the powers of Rooster, Ignite, the blockchain, and so, so much more, all made possible with the chicken and the egg. Bok bok. <clears throat> now I'd like to open the floor for the next few minutes to answer any questions while you collate your thoughts and while we swing a microphone over to you, raise your hand if you'd like to ask a question. Uh, I want to say a huge thank you to Avalanche and to Arva Labs for hosting this event and for being so supportive of six devs from Australia and our indie project. In saying that, while I'm up here absorbing the credit, I want to say a huge thank you to our CMO, Shauna Burberry, and her husband, Ken, uh, particularly for helping coordinate this event. Thank you. And a huge thank you to the incredible team behind the success of Chicken. Here we have Gravy, our designer, KFC, one of our full stack developers. And back home, we have Sherbock, Hen Solo, and Barbecue Sauce. You guys are my heroes, my idols, and my lifelong friends. And the community will back me up in saying that this is the one, one of the most glowing examples of a team project in the history of crypto. And it's a privilege to work alongside you. Now, thanks guys. Thank you. So who's got some questions? One here. Yeah, you said we need to stack egg and hodl AVAX for Rooster. This is true. <laughs> do we need to do that on a 50-50 basis or? No, I wouldn't say 50-50 basis. I'd say, um, obviously, as an existing community member, it's going to be more important for you to uh, hold some egg. Don't, don't get rid of it. Obviously, what we do here at Chicken Farm is incentivize long-term behavior over short-term behavior. Uh, at every step of the way, we're going to incentivize the holding or the burning of our, of our token, egg. Um, so for existing users, that's, that's probably the most important thing to focus on. Obviously, at any point, you can sell egg, you can sell feed but you're always incentivized to use it within the ecosystem. Thanks. No worries. Anyone else? Don't be shy. What have we got? Oh, we'll get the microphone over to you. For the live streamers at home, thanks for tuning in, by the way. Oh, really? We've got some live stream questions, guys. We better catch up. So will it be easy to transfer all our uh, chicken assets, like NFTs, uh, eggs, from the um, MetaMask to Core Wallet? Yeah, I'd say that that will be made fairly possible. Obviously, the, there's probably a bottleneck in terms of how MetaMask transfers. Uh, the desktop client is obviously quite limited compared to the, uh, the, the mobile wallet is a bit more optimized for transferring NFTs. Um, I would say at the moment, the easiest way to transfer NFTs is to go to NF Trade. Um, there's a little icon 
it's like three dots when you go into your specific NFT on NF Trade. You can just transfer the NFT straight to any other wallet. But you have to do something manually, not it's going to be automatically transferred to Core Wallet. No, okay. no, it's not. I mean, unless unless uh, Avalanche and, and Arva Labs have come up with an idea to to bridge assets straight across and port from wallets, um, I'd say. I mean, it's possible that they just use the seed phrase and, and it's just instantly there. So, yeah, TBC. Anyone else? Technical questions, also welcomed. We've got our full stack developer over here. Uh, I am not technical, so I will not ask anything about that. But uh, just Fair. from like a marketing <laughs> perspective, too, I know that the gaming aspect of uh, NFTs and how you know, you're bringing that together with the DeFi part or in another financial things, how are you balancing like the audience uh, to help them understand and to onboard them, like because I'm, I'm, I work on the gaming side, yep. and so I'm familiar with how to get those type of audiences. But for this, like we see very different. I also have a chicken, so I understood that aspect. And what I find interesting about the project is that there's strategy involved, right? There's decision making. There's a lot of the core aspects of what a gameplay loop would look like, right? Yeah. So how how do you see that from an audience perspective, and how can you effectively market that to different people? Yeah, yeah, that's a great question. I I feel that um, I mean obviously we've got several sort of guerrilla marketing campaigns lined up. We think that this is a, a project and a concept that's fairly transmissible to, to the everyman. Uh, we don't think you have to understand complex um, sort of NFT or crypto narratives or concepts to, to understand how to play the game of chicken. Um, for us, it's more about visibility. We know, we're confident that once people engage with the project, we've, we've pretty much got them um, coming into the ecosystem. It's, it's that initial. Uh, push for visibility. Obviously, at the moment, there's uh, quite a saturation of NFTs, and it is hard to filter out the noise and, and to prove that you have more utility than other NFTs. Um, but I think, like, honestly, the best marketing that we have at the moment, uh, and the best marketing we'll always have, is our community. Um, so we continue to put far more effort into uh, caring for our community and building for our community, as opposed to um, trying to get uh, sort of the, the everyman to, to set up a MetaMask wallet and all this kind of thing. I think, to be fair, that is, that is the biggest barrier to entry. Um, I know we've probably all experienced it. Uh, the process of explaining to people which exchange to, to use as a fiat on-ramp and then uh, tra which one can actually transfer to C-Chain and, and, and then setting up the MetaMask wallet and having it um, C-Chain compatible and then going to buy some of this and that and then that's, that's the hardest part. Once you've got them there, it's super easy. So we're exploring, obviously, the uh, regulatory uh, constraints in Australia um, uh, are barriers that we're working through at the moment, but we're definitely exploring the opportunity of having a fiat on-ramp directly on site so that people could uh, much more easily, in theory, um, onboard to the ecosystem. That's something we'll continue to explore over time. But we're really hoping the core, the core wallet does uh, a great job at making this user experience a bit more friendly and a bit easier. Because um, as, as I said, when, when people are in the ecosystem, they're here to stay. We're, we're perfectly happy with that. And I don't think at any point anyone's been sort of upset with their entry to the chicken ecosystem. At least I hope not. Thanks for your question. Does that answer your question? Yeah, I think like part of the sort of challenge too is where you have like onboarding gamers versus onboarding people interested in DeFi. Correct. Like, like yes. So yeah, so it's because it's also if there's only 2,300 wallets, right? That means your users are, you know, you obviously you're not going for high MAU like in the traditional gaming space. Mm -hmm. So like considering how that works from like and then an, a business model standpoint too, right? Yep. You really you basically need to keep 2,300 plus N engaged as you onboard and add new features. So correctly. That, and and that's more I guess the DeFi side, but then you're gamifying it as opposed to right, a game itself, like in the traditional sense. Exactly right. I mean, you know, there are obviously the options to advertise and, and explore avenues through like Twitch and all of this kind of thing. But I would compare the experience of like uh, Web3 gaming, obviously, other than the, the AAA gaming developers, which they, they definitely have a place and they're super important for our ecosystem's growth. We sort of see Web3 gaming as um, optimized for, you know, ownership, value creation, and, and things like this, idle gameplay and, and upgradability. So um, essentially, we're going to play to the strengths of Web3 uh, and always continue to do that. Even our, our um, play and earn gaming offerings, which I think is important to stipulate that, that the fun of the game and the addictive sort of gameplay loop is always there to keep people wanting to play the game and adding that value back into the ecosystem. 
Um, so, yeah, obviously we'll have the plan earn uh, as well, but it will continue to have that same look and feel of a game that you don't have to set aside 14 hours to, um, to sit down and, and muscle your way through. It's something that you can come to, uh, set yourself up, you know, uh, as, as Chicken Whale God occasionally does, uh, you know, morning coffee, um, slap on some tunes, feed the chicken, uh, farm the egg, all of this kind of thing, you know. It, it, I mean, it must get hard once you own over, uh, uh, particularly over 100 chicken, that must be really difficult. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, you know, bravo to your commitment. And, um, yeah, it's, it's that sort of experience that we want to provide. Um, but, yeah, I, I, I definitely hear your point. The, the onboarding through DeFi is probably a much more seamless experience once the DeFi community realises that's what lies under the hood. We obviously don't advertise ourselves as a, as a financial product. Um, we are a game, first and foremost. Um, but, yeah, there's a significant uh, sort of technology stack running under the hood that I think would appeal to a DeFi audience once they realise what's happening. Yeah, thank you. Any other IRL questions before we ask our streamers? Don't be shy. We got one. Hooked you in, man. All right. Um, as you guys are ever expanding, yep. I'm just curious as to how you are going to take uh, security and code audits kind of moving forward. Absolutely. So obviously uh, we launched initially with the um, uh, a sort of a proxy contract and, and there was a level of trust involved, like certainly. Uh, we realized that with staking and taking custody of anything, you need an audit. You, you, you simply shouldn't be operating without one. Um, so we got our staking contracts audited by Hacken. Um, I don't know if you guys have checked out their, their cafe that they've got going on, but it's actually kind of brilliant. Um, yeah, they, they're great, great people over at Hacken and, and they audited our staking contract and uh, we'll continue to seek audits through industry leaders and professionals, uh, for, particularly for contracts that um, where security is imperative, where we couldn't necessarily reissue something or whether it's, uh, you know, any, any time it's concerning LP or funds external to the ecosystem that we don't have control of, um, security can always be insured and, uh, and full transparency as well. And I think also the, um, the API that we've built out uh, gives a lot of transparency in terms of what's happening under the hood as well without giving everything away all at once. Yeah. Does that answer your question? Thank you, my friend. Sean, have we got some streamers online? Of course, anyone else, feel free to jump in at any point. Uh, if there's a, are there any other questions in the room? Oh, we've got one here. Yeah. We can do a follow-up video for the streamers. Too. Definitely. Don't worry. Sounds good. I am worried about the streamers, just so you know. <laughs> I was just wondering if you guys have any updates on um, the cockfighting. Ooh. Yeah, we knew this would come. Look, uh, we do internally. have. Ha it's always progressing. We've always got a lot going on. We're in consultation with... Uh, some brilliant game studios. Uh, we're trying to keep the majority of it in-house because unfortunately, as we all know, we're, we're in this uh, sort of tricky spot in Web3 where game studios, uh, particularly the AAA game studios, they're building with a four to eight year, sometimes 10 year timeline in mind. We don't have uh, that as our vision. We want to move significantly quicker than that. So we want to keep as much of the process internal as possible so that we can ensure sort of speed of output. And also we don't necessarily need all the bells and whistles to launch this thing. We, we want the mechanics and the gameplay loop and, and sort of the satisfaction to be there. Um, and actually, Gravy, you had some excellent points when we were talking about it um, the other day. And if you'd like to speak on it. Yeah, for sure. Am I? Yeah, you're live, baby. Oh, I saw the camera move. That's terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I think uh, in terms of the speed and the AAA versus what we want to achieve. That's like, if you look at like, what they gave an example of Cyberpunk, Cyberpunk yeah. you know, look at that, that steaming mess and just the, the, the number of people who were involved in that over the years. What we want to do is something clean and satisfying, like you say. Uh, it's a matter of scale to me. Like, I think once we've got this sort of, we're in pre-development, we've got a lot of our mechanics and our units involved. Uh, that's so careful to speak around. I know, it. I know. I know. So <laughs> Basically, we don't want to share any of the gameplay before it's ready, 
spot. Said, the, yeah. the main question I was wondering is, can you guys confirm if it's like a AAA quality of game? It's not, it's not going to start out as a AAA quality. Emotionally, yes. <laughs> exactly. Again, like the, for the timelines we're, we're aiming for, that's, that's not what we want to start with. The, the, the goal, obviously, with everything in this ecosystem is to, to ensure that it's usable and functional to begin with uh, and safe. And once that's out, we can continue to expand. And that's another reason for keeping things internal so that we don't have to constantly go back to contractors or external parties and say, hey, we want to actually do this now. And they go, oh, well, we didn't have that in mind when we, when we built the original thing. Um, so that, that's, that's really the goal for us, is to keep at least the, the core mission of it as internal as possible so we can continually add to it over time. Yeah. But unfortunately, there's no gameplay to be shown today, but um, we won't show it before it's ready. Anyone else? Any questions? Oh, Any one back questions. here, one here. I got a real important question. Are here you go. guys going to have any basketball roosters? Because I didn't see any <laughs> up there. Oh, it's, yeah, it's already done. Okay. Right. okay. I got you. Huge. Huge, yeah. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you. And w which team? I don't matter, man. It just doesn't matter. <laughs> great, great, great. That's because you know, we've got a Lakers fan. Ooh, ooh. Uh, I came late, so apologize if you went over this or That's if you so answered fine. it already. Were you at the friends party last night? I was not. Oh, well. <laughs> Zero excuse. <laughs> <laughs> Different party. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Uh, when subnet and um, mm. if you have any details around the resource requirements for being a validator on the subnet. Yeah, so uh, I mean, Arva Labs are uh, much more specific with the requirements for being a validator, but if you're mm. wanting to be a validator, we're very interested in talking to you. So thank you. Um, definitely reach out to us. Uh, obviously, the requirements for launching a subnet are to have five to seven validators lined up. Yeah, uh, um, there, was a, there was a talk just before ours, uh, if you can time travel or watch the archive, perhaps, but they had some really great points about uh, validation with subnets uh, and the sort of... Yeah minimum maximum requirements i'm well. perfectly comfortable with uh the avalanche part yep I'm curious mm. about the Subnet additional burden from from chicken yeah sure sure, sure. and mm. like maybe the economic resources required for locking up well we did get rate limited the other day which is, uh, I, I think is a sort of badge of pride apparently that was during the ddos <laughs> but yeah whatever yeah. Let's not talk about the DDoS, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah, yeah, essentially, I don't think the, the resources that we're requiring from validators would be, um, would, would mean that you'd have to be exclusionary um, mm. for any of your other services. But um, certainly, it would be advantageous to us to have, you know, our own subnet and committed validators. We had a fantastic chat. Uh, I'm just going to pick the names up off the floor here with John Wu and... Uh, Emin Gunsura uh, yesterday, we had a fantastic chat and without even bringing it up, they said we need to get you on your own subnet. Um, so we're extremely optimistic that one way or another it's going to happen and it's going to happen this year. Um, it's just a matter of obviously having the depth of liquidity in our native token um, and ensuring that that's stable and sound before doing anything drastic like moving the community to a subnet. Thanks. No worries. Thank you. Look forward to talking to you about validation, by the way. That'd be great. Anyone else? We've got one up here. Hello again. Our friend. Our friend. Sorry, guys. We're, um, we have to take last one? Last one. I'll stop after this, I promise. <laughs> no no pressure. Yeah. I'm curious as to how you guys are handling partnerships moving forward. Are you more focusing on other GameFi projects or just anything in particular? Um, and it is taking everything in my power not to show it out the project I'm with right now. <laughs> no, go on. I will I will Sure, sure, tell us. Elk Finance, and we'd love to partner with you. Okay, fantastic. fantastic. We'll be out there after the talk. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. Well, I mean, we'll any, see you. Any other animal on avalanches, you know. Uh, <laughs> we'll take That's what I figured. Um, but also, we're, we've, I'm not sure if anyone saw DeFi Kingdom's announcement yesterday, but we have a partnership uh, with them. Obviously, they're launching on their own subnet, which is hugely exciting. And we think the sort of brand alignment between Chicken and, and DeFi Kingdoms is, is strong. We're going to continue to seek out partnerships like this, um, ones that are relevant, obviously, technologically, thematically, and uh, will help us advance moving forward, as opposed to just a lot of, a lot of projects, you know, have symbolic or tokenistic partnerships. Uh, we, want, we want partnerships of substance. Much more active. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you. All right, guys, thank you very much. Bok, bok. See you all at the boat party. Thank you very much.